welcome to the Deuce Podcast. I'm Brad. And I'm Jeremy. And Jeremy, we are doing episode 72. Is it 72? Oh. It is 72. I'm the one that always keeps track of these things. <laughs> you are, thank goodness. Uh, <laughs> and we are doing our Western series. Westerns have sequels too, Jeremy. They do. And tell them what Western we are doing. Uh, today we are doing <laughs> Rooster Cogburn. Rooster Cogburn, the sequel, the to sequel to True Grit. True Grit, the original True Grit, the original True Grit, <laughs> not the Coen Brothers. Not that there's anything wrong with the Coen Brothers movie. No, it's fine. I'm waiting for the Coen Brothers version of Rooster Cogburn. No, but don't they have a Netflix series that's coming out that they filmed here in Nebraska, or parts of it that are like a western? I don't know. It's fine. Anyway, yeah. Um, this is, uh, the, uh, John Wayne's second to last movie. Uh, what was the last one? The Shootist? The Shootist, I, w- yeah. I do believe. Yeah. And, uh, we do have a special guest that we decided to bring on to this podcast. Uh, I would say a big supporter of us from, uh, you know, the early stages of us, uh, kind of dropping the deuces. Wouldn't you say, Jeremy? Oh, yeah. Why don't you introduce our guest? The uh, well today, uh, we have Chris. I hope I'm, I always hope I say this correctly. Mounts. Yes. Excellent. Do people get your last name wrong? It seems pretty easy. Oh, it's deceptively easy, but people try all sorts of things. Muncie, Muncie. Uh, the short story behind the name is originally the family name was spelled M O U N T S. And half of the family uh, was pro-Confederate, and those kept that Ooh. spelling of the name, and the other half was pro-Union, and we changed our, the spelling of our name. So This is, like, perfect for this movie, too. Yeah. I know. I, I was watching it, and I couldn't believe how many uh, <laughs> Confederate references that there <laughs> were, and I... I don't think if people aren't like savvy to kind of like Civil War era history, they right. they would just kind of wash right over them. Yeah, yeah, I do believe that too. This movie came out in like seventies. Yeah, like like middle like 75, 70s. 76. Yeah, seventy five, seventy six. Yeah. Um, yeah, he he says a couple things, and I went, I'm sorry, what did he say? <laughs> I was like, oh no, that's, that... I, that's usually me and the Duke. I usually <laughs> go, what did he say? <laughs> um. I mean, I'm not. I'm my. I grew up like with my dad watching John Wayne movies, just like a lot of people, and um, so I kind of really shied away from them. I didn't really watch a lot of them when yeah. I was younger because I was like, "Uh, it's something my dad watches. That's old." Yeah. You know, but um, but now that I've gotten older myself, I've come to kind of respect him a little bit mm-hmm. more. So yeah. So. Yeah, and it's worth giving a look at. I think it yeah. gets overlooked a lot. Like, they just don't have the same popularity that they used to. I think for the most part, the westerns. The do. westerns. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I thought, well, hey, let's you know, let's, let's go through a series and see those. Um, I'm gonna assume, like, from the trivia I read, that uh, the director and John Wayne did not get along. Sounds to me that uh, he kept on just <laughs> complaining and yelling at him. Uh, the the way that John Wayne knows how to. Yeah. Um, he didn't like the dialogue of the movie, and uh, would, yeah, they would do a couple takes, and he'd be like, "Keep going, let's do a couple more takes." And he was like, "No, one wants <laughs> to hear me say this crappy dialogue." Yeah. yeah. I, I I think a lot of people kind of were like, yeah, wanted to phone this one in, or they were like, "Yeah, this is this is uh, silly." I mean, uh, like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I've I've got my things I want to say about this movie, but we'll get yeah. to it. Do you have any... Uh, well, is, go ahead, Chris. It's definitely, uh, a, like you said, it's the second last John Wayne picture. He's definitely on the downward slope of his career. Not that it's a bad movie or anything, but obviously, you know, he's kind of phoning in it a little bit. It's kind of like old hat for him. And, you know, uh, he had cancer at this time, and he's real paunchy and... Uh, I mean, there's still some really good moments in it, but he's obviously the Duke, and he could he could order anybody around on set if he felt like it. Right. In fact, I got uh, I was reading I, I think it was Charles Fleischer's biography a couple months back, and 
uh, he had a John Wayne story, which surprised me. Yeah. Uh, I guess like one of the first uh, movies or something that he worked on was a John Wayne picture, and he came in one day, and everybody was just standing around, and he was like, you know, new, uh, full of piss and vinegar and wanted to like get to work. <laughs> everybody was just waiting and waiting. And apparently John Wayne was still in this trailer, and uh, everybody's like, nobody's allowed to work or set up or do anything until John Wayne comes out. Crazy. And Charles said, like, that's when he knew what Hollywood power, like, right. really was. Yeah. When nobody, nobody would be doing anything, everybody's just standing around wasting money. And he found out later that the reason nobody could work is John Rule, uh, John Wayne had this rule that until he had his bowel movement he wasn't ready to act and nobody could do anything and it, it, it's just do you think, perfect for the deuce do, <laughs> do you think John Wayne like named his bowel movements like he was like I'm gonna call this one true grit you know true, I mean? shit. true shit true <laughs> shit there you go that's didn't, the real didn't have much of anything that's the quiet the, the <laughs> quiet the, man that's the quiet man <laughs> Silent but deadly. The poopist. <laughs> well, enough of these shitty puns. Okay. Uh, why don't we take... Uh, well, well, first of all, Jeremy, we yeah. are part of the No Phony Podcast Network. We are. That's awesome. Yeah. What is the No Phony Podcast Network? Uh, no Phony Podcast Network is a group of uh, various podcasters who... Various. Just has some, you know, tenuous connections, not necessarily... Uh, you know, like a central theme that ties us all together or anything like that. Um, but what they do is they go out, they support one another. Um, you know, it's a great organization. Uh, we, we back each other up. But if you want to go check it out, there's a little of something for everybody. Uh, so if if movies or pop culture isn't your thing, there's uh, politics with dummies. There's, uh, we have different things where it's just people doing sketch comedy. We have people... Uh, who are we have somebody who's talking about uh, they they do their take on the Bible and like certain passages from it and stuff like that. So I mean, it, we really have tons of different groups in here that do different things. Is that but, run by Catherine Hepburn? I'm just wondering. Uh, no, no, okay, no, Bibleish, no, no, okay. Um, but go out there, check them out. We're growing, we're getting bigger all the time. Uh, it's a great group of folks. It um, is. Yes, it really and Chris, is. Chris, you're a big podcast fanatic. You love podcasts. Do you uh, have any of your favorites that you want to plug real quick? Uh, always uh, the Cinema Psyops, which I'm a number one super fan yes, for. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And another great Omaha-based podcast, in case people are interested in the funny books, is the Two-Headed Nerd, and they do everything comic book related. Really? Very nice. Two-Headed Nerd. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Huh. Well, I'll have to check that they out. They used to work at uh, Legend oh. uh, Comics Coffee, and now they uh, they do other stuff for their grown-up jobs. <laughs> there they go. There you go. So uh, after these messages, we'll be right back. After these messages, we'll be right back. Did you ever see a film at such a young age it left you traumatized with cinematic wounds? Oh, necrophilia. Oh, oh, oh. It's a dead issue, man. Don't, don't push it. Cinema PsyOps is a weekly podcast documenting an ongoing experiment on the mind of an unwilling test subject. No one should have to watch this movie. Oh, no one should have to watch this? No one should have to watch this movie. Surprisingly, it's not a topic that a lot of people really want to tackle. I'm shocked. Crude. I know, really. Right? It's the next sexual frontier that no one wants to explore. I am, in the most sincerest of senses, disappointed in it. It takes a powerful goddess like Connie, jam her arm down the monster's throat and kill it. Oh, I'm still tripping out over that. Even as a kid, I was like, I gotta find a girl like that. Every week, I, I get a new look of disappointment that I never thought I could get it's out of it. unimaginable. At 12 years old, you should not be watching this. Obviously. At 13, you should not be. 14, you should be. I'm not entirely sure even 17-year-olds should be watching this. Just because you're offended by something doesn't mean that you have the right to demand that it doesn't exist. Watching this film again, I had all of this, like, little nerd glee with everything that kept Little history up. doll yeah, popping up absolutely. at you. So I totally loved this film. Hey, I know why you, you know, couldn't see that. It's because your brain's warped from watching this shit at 12 years old. Yeah, this is this is a rough movie. I told you ahead of time when we were getting ready to do it that it was How did you watch movie. this shit at 12? 
Because physical wounds heal, cinematic ones don't. Listen to Cinema Psyops. And we're back. We're Jeremy. back. We're back. Check Yay. out those. Yay. Whee. Use promo code, um, what? <laughs> ChristianMingles.com? No. Wait, yeah. What? <laughs> Pro, promo, co- promo code Deuce Movement. <laughs> Farmers.com? Yeah. You've seen that, right? Where it's like, farmers? Farmers can date, too. Farmers.com. Yeah, I have seen that. Anyway. What? <laughs> <laughs> has nothing to do with this movie, what? and I do apologize for my random... Farmers have everything to do with this movie. I guess well, they so. they can, well, sure, I suppose. Sure, whatever, but, you know... I the West. Chris, uh, I think, Jeremy, we, we should drop the deuce on this. Mm, I think we should drop the deuce. So go ahead. Let's drop All it. All right. So, uh, the movie, of course, Rooster Cogburn, sequel to True Grit. Uh, so, we, uh, we open up on a scene with... Uh, it's Roos- Rooster Cogburn, played, of course, by, uh, one, uh, uh Marion Mitchell Morrison, <laughs> uh, a.k.a. John Wayne. Uh, he is, uh, he's tracking down, like, some, some thieves, uh, they must have pulled some sort of job. So he's tracking down the thieves, he's got his deputy with him, because he's a U.S. Marshal, uh, he basically busts in a window and says, all right, everybody freeze. And his marshal, like, busts through the door. They all open fire. They kill his deputy. And then he just starts opening fire on all of them. Like, and yelling at them, you bastards! You, you bastards! bastards! Like, he's he's pissed. Um, so he guns them all down. Uh, and then starts the, like, long, arduous journey of, like, I really thought that that really wasn't part of the movie, and I think he was, like, angry at craft service. Yeah. You bastard! <laughs> which is like, somebody filmed this. Geez, somebody filmed this. John Wayne has a gun, and he's going to the craft service <laughs> table. Well, yeah, it's a real kind of tropey uh, beginning because, you know, any time in a Western, if you shoot the deputy or the bartender, that just means you're just a low-down, dirty skunk. And, uh, yeah, I mean, really it is. Like, of course, he's you know, getting his sweet revenge on everything as he's going through. Um, well, he ends up uh, in front of the court, in front of a judge, uh, and it's Judge Parker, played by John McIntyre. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Joey McIntyre's right great uncle? Yeah, sure. Sure, we'll go Sounds with Sounds right. Yep. Um, don't make any of these facts <laughs> up. I don't. At all. No. 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 Um, so he uh, he's in front of the judge. He's in the – basically he's uh, – I think he's – is he over the Indian territories, which would have been like Oklahoma? I think so. He is a federal mar- marshal whose jurisdiction covers Indian territory, which is Oklahoma at this time. Oh, but yeah. where this court is is actually Fort Smith, Arkansas. Ah, gotcha. And that's why you're on the one. next state over. That's nah. why you're on this episode. I got you. So <laughs> uh, he has this kind of – he has it out with the judge. The judge is trying to uh, – the, the judge is basically telling him, you know, you can't just go in wildly shooting at people anymore. We need to rest. This is the way things right. are moving. This isn't like it was back in the day. Like now, you, you have I've, to bring people I haven't in. seen True Grit. I'm like the only person on the planet who's never seen – the original True Grit. Oh, really? Um, are, are is the judge in the first one, or any of these people in the first one? I'm gonna guess not. Uh, well, I believe Cogburn. the judges. I believe the judges and uh, John Wayne and everybody else, except for maybe the the he he does live in the back of a a Chinese uh, right. washing man's house in the first one too. Okay, yeah. so probably that guy. Yeah, I. I don't remember, like, a lot of the peripheral characters from the first one. Like, it's been really long since I've seen it. My my uh, mother was a big John Wayne fan when I was a kid, so, like, I'd we'd end up watching those movies, but mm. it's been so long. I didn't watch them for a long time either. Right. So, yeah. But here's where we really can see John Wayne's age a yeah. lot. Like, it's just kind of... It's not that he's folding it in the scene, 
Well, he is, but he's kind of hamming it up really a lot, yeah. right? Well, and I don't remember. I don't remember. And correct me if I'm wrong, Chris. You may have seen it before, you know, more recently than I have. But I don't remember Rooster Cogburn being so hammy, uh, like where he's just like, "Wow, well, I'm gonna do whoa," and like the big I've overly seen, like, dramatic like reactions to things. Yeah. I remember him being kind of tough and gritty and stuff like yeah. that. But like, I, I don't remember him being that over the top. Yeah, True Grit was like 67 or 68, and now this is 75, so... Yeah, he's a little bit more hammy, but this is part of the Rooster Cogburn kind of shtick where he is the federal marshal, and he gets his man, but he's kind of... Uh, <laughs> uh, like a uh, court's <laughs> Old West nightmare, uh, police brutality, and uh, kind of has a reputation for being a drunkard, and he's... Right ornery and a, a, a kind of a loner yeah yeah and he, he and he even talks about that where he's like look you're you're violent you like aren't you you shoot first and ask questions later and uh he's arguing with the judge um and you know of course the judge calls him out and says like look you're old you're fat you're you know drunk your yeah. coat doesn't fit around your belly which I can empathize with, he, but it's, a it's good like line. <laughs> <laughs> he has a good line where he's like, you know, I've always worn this coat into your your courtroom, and you never had a problem with what was inside of it. Yeah, you know, meaning that, you know, when you needed me. Yeah. You know. Yeah, you never when you needed it, you never had a problem with what right. was inside of it. You're right. And so I was just like, ooh, damn. But if you think about it, I mean, this is this is a similar kind of speech to every one of those movies where they're like. Give me your badge and gun, like in every other movie. Yeah. I do the dirty work that you're afraid to do, kind of a thing. No, so. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know, like, if you're a historian on John Wayne, Chris, but, like, from what I know, there's that mythology of John Wayne and the cancer that he had, and that he got it. And, like, Colleen Dewhurst, there was a movie that he was in with Colleen Dewhurst. Everyone that was in this movie, and I can't think of it, like, died. It's the. In this it's the- the Genghis Khan movie that they filled out, uh, yes. filmed out in Nevada. Yeah. And um, everyone so that was that, in it. That's where they did lots of nuclear testing. Supposedly yes. that's – a bunch of people got cancer from that. But also I I believe he smoked too. So it's right. a horse apiece when, yeah. what, honest, what gave him Colleen, the cancer. Colleen Dewar smoked too. I mean that's how she became yeah. you know, the devil's voice in <laughs> The Exorcist 3. Well, they, they smoked cools though. Right. That, it wouldn't hurt your lungs. It's like, ah, smooth menthol. I know. Menthol. Ooh, they're cool. They cool the lungs. Colleen Dewars called it the Anna Green Gables. That's <laughs> what she would smoke. Yeah. Uh, but, so anyway, the uh, in the end, Judge Parker tells him to turn in his badge. Yeah. Uh, so he gives his badge back. And it's like, uh, like in during this process, you kind of get this whole, like, Make America Great Again, kind of like... You kind of do. Like, 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 there I was, was just a like, huh. bit of this that's weird, really weird. When you watch this movie, there's that dichotomy of like, you know, hey, are, are you uppity up because you have religion? Or like, I don't drink and I don't smoke and I don't do this stuff. But that doesn't make me better than you. Yeah. Oh, does it? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You have, kind of have that back and forth. And there's, there's some like, uh, he says like the, you want us to arrest people and not kill right. them? You pansies. It wasn't like this back in the day. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was like, it, he, you get the sense that it's, it, I was just like, huh, it sounds very familiar with like the whole, yeah, it's just like a very like, this is the way we used to do it. You know, yeah. we were tough and now it's, now it's different and therefore change is bad. Um, So he heads back to his, uh, to his room I think he's, I can't remember, he's playing cards? Yeah, he's playing poker yeah. with uh, Chin Lee, who he rents yes. the, the back room from the laundromat or, you know, washman service. And and Chin Lee gets him some beer, um, which I thought this was an interesting, like, little discussion. He was like, oh, he's like, what's with this beer? Like, he, yeah. first off, he pours out, pours out some of his glass of beer into a bowl for his cat to drink, um, which is interesting because I was like, hey, look, my cat, like, if you leave beer out, she will go for said beer. Yeah. And I've actually had where she drank, like, drank a little bit of it before I caught her, 
And I looked over at her, and her eyes were just, like, pointing different directions. And I was like, oh, shit, I think I killed the cat. But, well, you know, uh, stuff, stuff happens. Yeah. Was um, it that sweet Kansas City beer, or was that that <laughs> St. Louis beer that I John like wanted? St. Louis beer. No, the and I was interested. I was like, what? What is going? So I don't know if it was like an Anheuser Busch, or if it was, <laughs> or whatever it would have been back then, or if it was like what the Kansas City versus what the St. Louis beer was. But yeah, apparently Kansas City beer is sweet, and St. Louis beer is, I would guess, About less more, so. More great. It was more yeah. savory. It's like probably drinking like a Bud Heavy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the uh, few years back, I went to visit a friend in Texas, and uh, I ordered a breakfast. They had I can't remember what the restaurant was called, but it was called the Federale. Oh, <laughs> and nice. so I I got this. I I bought the breakfast, and it came with all of this stuff. Uh, and then it was like, and a and a Bud Heavy, and I went okay. And so they were getting bringing stuff out. And I'm like, can I just get like a juice instead of the Budweiser? And they go, no, that is part of this. And I was like, okay. So like they kept coming back and were like getting on to my case about like not drinking the beer with my with my breakfast. So I end up having the Budweiser with my breakfast. Hey, they're the ones that said you you had to. <laughs> I just thought it was like where they have like a joke item on a menu where like they weren't really going to like force me to drink a beer, hey, but well, you ordered it. I did, like, and ordered, I did drink it. It's like ordering a lobster. I, a... But I felt, uh, honestly, I felt a little badass drink, drinking my beer and eating my, like, tough man breakfast in the morning. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's like when you're uh, in Milwaukee or hanging out with Matt Syap and you're not binge drinking, and then we just turn and look at you like you're the weirdo. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, the yeah. If, if I'm not keeping up with Matt Syap, then oof. That, that He will make sure that you are. He will make sure you do. Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, so Rooster's back home. He's he and his cat are getting drunk, uh, or starting to get drunk, and he uh he yells at Chin Lee to get him his whiskey. Well, uh, the owner of the establishment has it locked up, and so he's gonna start shooting things until they bring him his whiskey. So this is well, this is like the hammiest part, I would say, the biggest hammiest part of the movie. It, it, yeah, it's like almost like this comic relief section. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's like he's just like over the top going on. He's this one. very over the top. Um, and part of me would like to, th- if it was any other actor, I'd be like, oh, he seems like he's having fun. But I just don't think that John Wayne was. I think he was just like, like Chris said, he had cancer. I don't think he was having fun at any time <laughs> during this movie. Uh, no, no. I mean, like, I don't just don't think he's a person who. I don't know. He didn't seem like somebody who had fun in general after a while. I don't know. You know, the quiet man, he, I think he had fun spanking Marino O'Hara. Yeah. Let's be honest. Mm. Probably. Drinking John Ford under the table, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, while he's at home, uh, the judge comes to see him. Well, actually, I take this back. Before this, we see a, we see a scene where... Um, we have uh, a scout is riding ahead of some Union soldiers. Uh, they are transporting some nitroglycerin. And yep. he tells them, hey, like yes. the road's out up ahead. There's a shallow spot over here. You can get across the water. And so they go to the uh, the river bank. They're going to try to ford the river or, or, you know, get across. And they get ambushed. And uh, everybody gets slaughtered. And the scout is actually working with uh, some other outlaws who they go and they take the nitroglycerin yeah. that is in this... Uh, is, that the, the, is that that Bush song? Nitroglycerin, glycerin. No? Yes. Okay. Just yeah, it's just like that one. It just plays all the time. Yeah. Glycerin. Yeah. The, uh, so now these, uh, like, <laughs> these uh, outlaws have this, uh, the, the nitro. So... Uh, the judge goes to see. Uh, the judge goes to see uh, Rooster Cogburn and tells him, "Hey, you got to go track these guys down." Uh, I'm retired. Yes. Uh, so he's yeah he's he's kind of being passive aggressive about it and and I having. Don't think a there's fit. anything ever passive aggressive about John Wayne. I don't think he was being aggressive aggressive. No, but I don't think he was being passive aggressive. 
He kind of was. I'm retired now. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. And but so the he, judge uh, specifically he he uh, he wants uh, Rooster to do it because the scout who portrayed his fellow soldiers uh, with the nitro is somebody who used to serve with uh, Rooster in the yeah. war. The war. Mm-hmm. And uh, if anybody didn't kind of get hip to it by now. With the cat's name, uh, the cat is named <laughs> after a Confederate general, so we kind of know which side that uh, Rooster served on yes. during the war. Yep. Uh, and the the guy who, uh, the guy who, uh, the scout was uh, is a character named Breed, uh, who's played by Anthony Zerby, or Zerb, I don't know. Uh, yes, but you don't fight. Know. What's that? Matthias from the Omega Man. The Omega Man. Yeah, I was going to say from the Omega Man. Yeah, Yeah, for a minute I was like, I know you from somewhere. He's been in numerous other things. He's been in a lot of things. But the Omega Man is the first thing that always pops into my head with him. Um, and of course the the guy who led the, uh, the guy who led everything, uh, the the mission was uh Hawk, who I think I thought that he said that he. Was friends with Hawk too. That, uh, it seems like uh, he knows him. Rooster said he was he knew he was he knew Hawk. He used to consider him his friend until Hawk uh, robbed that. He, until Hawk robbed a Wells Fargo wagon that they were both watching. That's right. Yeah. I think it was. Yeah. No, it was like, go ahead. No, no, no. Hawk was, uh, yeah, he said Hawk uh, had robbed that Wells Fargo, and that's that's kind of where the split happened from. But now right. mm-hmm. Hawk leads a, a group of bandits, and uh, everybody might recognize him because he was uh, Michael York's partner in Logan's Run with the other Sandman. Yep. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Uh, yeah, Hawk, that's, yeah. I was like, I was like, I know him too. That's the guy from Logan's Run. Yeah. So, uh, but I thought what he did was he sold a bunch of. Uh, uh, Clients' information from Wells Fargo. Oh no, no different Wells Fargo. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, but uh, so this, so Richard Jordan, uh, the guy who played Hawk, you told me something interesting about him earlier. I did, but I can't remember. Uh, he he was when he's doing a lot of his parts, he was trying to do them oh, over the top. He's he 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 was he did him <laughs> he hammed it up too because he thought this was going to be a a big failure. No one's going to see this movie because this is a, a sequel that came out like, you know, almost ten years after the original, and and this script is bad. And so he just he decided he was going to ham it up, especially in the, that scene that he has with um, Captain Hepburn. Yeah, but I think it works. I think it works. I think it worked by fine. today's standards. I think that that is a good. Like we like our we like our villains slightly on edge, <laughs> so I think I think it works really well. But um, he was saying that like oh. Nobody's gonna watch it, and you know we have Catherine Hepburn in this movie. Oh yeah, that's what who it was. Is, who is she, he said that? Yeah, who Catherine is practically Hepburn, dead as as it was. Yeah, that, that <laughs> it, he thought that she was gonna die at any moment, and obviously he died like in 1996. He, yeah, he died. Like that. He died much before her. She died like 10 years oh, after yeah. that. Like, he know? he had a brain tumor. Yeah, that's what it was. So he might have been in that other movie with with them. No, he wasn't. The uh. So, uh, anyway, so we, uh, the judge gives Rooster back his, uh, his star and he's like, all right, I'm, I'm going to get out of here. And he takes off. Um, so now Hawk, Breed, and the other outlaws, uh, they go to a, uh, like a church mission kind of settlement a place called Fort Ruby. Uh, and there's a school there teaching uh, teaching native children. Yeah. Uh, and so they're they're teaching the Indian children, and they all pull up, and the school marm, who is uh, Eula Goodnight, played by Catherine Hepburn, Catherine Hepburn, uh, sees them and is like, "Oh crap, okay." So she gets all the children and sneaks them all out the back, and tells them to run away. And she goes out. And gets her father, the Reverend George Goodnight, uh, and some of the other men. But basically, they go and talk to them 
you try to ask them to leave or hey if you're going to be here yeah, right at least don't give guns and you know alcohol to the natives so from what i read that that if if Catherine Hepburn would have said no they were going to have like either Maggie Smith or something like that who would have been a more probably appropriate age probably a little bit more appropriate age than that i mean Catherine Hepburn like when she's like and this is my father and yeah. i was like but <laughs> how old? What? Like, he's three years older than you. How old is he? He's got to be 107. Yeah. So, so... Looking good for 107. But but I think this scene is badass. This scene is amazing. So, she's she basically is telling them, please don't do this. And she's being nice about it. And they're like, yeah, we'll do what we want to do. Like, go back inside. And she stands up. And finally, Hawk says something. And she talks shit to him. It was just like basically like a, you're uncultured, you know, or you, you know you're swine or whatever. Just but says it. Very, she calls uh, him a skunk. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, she says. Um, she says. She says. I need. I needn't fear the skunk, but I know I do not like its smell. Yes, or I love that like line. that. And he was yeah. like, "What the hell?" And so I was like, "Whoa, damn!" But so he fires into the ground in front of her. And she starts she's reciting. Like, she's like Yoda in this yeah, like, she scene. It's she starts reciting like... the the Lord's Prayer, and yeah. he's just firing in the ground, and he's walking at her, and she's just staring him in the eyes the whole time. He's firing at the ground, and she's not flinching. She's not moving, and he gets. Uh, I think she's like, "Do you know how many Academy Awards I have?" <laughs> I did the same thing with Spencer Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> but so she's she's just standing her ground and he gets up to her and like fires in the ground and she does nothing. And so then he kind of turns like he seems rattled. And so he turns he's like by his by the uh, by the wagon and she's just walking away with her father. <laughs> and I'm still reciting the Lord's like right. Bible verses and the Lord's prayer, like she's just like you are, you know, you worry me none. Yeah. So I don't know. How did you like this scene, uh, Chris? Uh, it's it's pretty good because uh, they they the, it's moving pretty fast. So I don't know if everybody realizes, but they're no longer in Oklahoma. They've crossed the border into Indian territory, which is now Oklahoma, and. Uh, there's no law in Indian Territory except for the federal marshals like uh, Rooster Cogburn, and they're few and far between. So they basically, these bandits can go in there, and as long as they have enough muscle, they can push everybody around. Yeah. But there's supposed to be restrictions. They're not supposed to be selling liquor to the Indians, and there, uh, there were a lot of racist laws at this time restricting uh, Indians buying firearms that could only have long rifles and not pistols and they're trying to offload all this loot to the indians before they move on to their you know wherever mm. they're going next yeah but yeah she they fire right at her feet she doesn't flinch there's smoke no. coming up from the ground it's pretty pretty badass <laughs> yeah and yeah, and it's... uh i go ahead i say like, no it it is a uh... Like this is the scene where I was just like, "Ooh, wow!" Yeah. Like, yeah, I was impressed. And did you recognize uh, who Reverend uh, Goodnight is? No. It's uh. uh I know John Warmer. John Warmer. Yeah. He was the uh, he was the dad in the the Father's Day segment from Creep Show. Oh I yeah, want, yeah, yeah, he was, wasn't he? That's funny. Oh shit! I was I was looking at him too, and I was like, "Do I?" I was looking at him like I knew him, but I didn't know how I knew him. We could they don't use him that much in this, really. No. Um. And mainly that's because that night, <laughs> the uh, and the, you see uh, waiting wait a oh, good segment. You like good that segue? segue? Yep, good yeah. segue. <laughs> I mean, I, you could ride on that segue. <laughs> I am. Uh, you know what else you could ride on? A wagon filled with Ooh. nitroglycerin, wow, which is what they're wow. standing around outside. And, wow, it's like you're a cop on a Segway. You know who else is a cop on a Segway? Oh, my God. <laughs> the, 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 uh, I just keep Paul Blart. Throwing them up and you keep knocking them out. <laughs> so, um, 
we see uh, the outlaws outside, uh, Hawk and Breed and everybody, are uh, getting a little, uh, what should we say, rambunctious. And so uh, they're outside. They're trying to force the Indians to drink. They're doing all this stuff. And uh, inside, Catherine Hepburn and her father are just watching from, like, the bell tower. And they're like, oh, trouble's going to start. Well, pretty soon, everything breaks down into a fight. And her father runs down there uh, to go stop them. And he's just caught up in all the fighting. And uh, he goes to stop somebody, or he's trying to pull somebody down. And I don't know if it was Hawk. I can't remember if it was Hawk. But he gets shot. And so uh, the next day, Eula and then uh, Wolf, who is one of the uh, uh, son of one of the deceased uh natives they're burying their loved ones uh and that's when we first see that uh rooster cogburn shows up and then uh so he shows up and he's talking with them basically he says that uh she you know he's gonna find the people who did this and you know gets bring them in so they can hang but uh he needs to take her somewhere else because he's not gonna let her stay there by herself uh, her or wolf. So he tells him to pack things up. We're going to get you out of here. Yeah, so, and she, uh, she she goes off on a, a pacifism speech telling him about uh, people living by the sword, dying by the sword, which becomes very ironic pretty quickly yeah. in the next scene when they get back to the trading post, which is on the yeah. other side of the border in Arkansas. Yep, she's, he's taking her back to basically where the law is right <laughs> excuse me so um so while they are heading back to uh this person's place to drop her off uh we see the wagon train kind of move its way through uh and at one point like we see one of hawks one of hawks guys starts talking crap about breed and so breed like jumps off his wagon or jumps off his horse onto the wagon with the guy and starts fighting him and like grabs his knife and is like trying to stab him i think he he ends up stabbing him in the shoulder or peck or something like that um did you say or the peck yeah or his peck oh like it, okay yeah okay i just was wondering yeah and it's so and breath. he's just <laughs> his man boob he got him uh, and he's bleeding all over the place uh, but then they they stop him but it, that's for he said that like you know why are we even trusting breed he's going to betray us like he did to his friends and then that's when he set him off so breed is breed is crazy but at least he's got like a code he's an interesting character in this. <clears throat> yeah he is an interesting character um so, uh, while well, shortly after all this happens, they're trying to get the, uh, trying to get the... Nitroglycerin. Yes, they're trying to get the glycerin through the, uh, through the pass. And, uh, actually, before that, don't they run into Indians, too? I think so. It's somewhere around there. Basically, yeah. they, they spot some natives, yeah, I think uh, so. and they, they see them watching them, and they're like, oh, man, they're gonna get us for yesterday so they're like okay uh breed takes like a few of the bottles of nitro out and as they run uh make a run for it he starts throwing them like their hand grenades uh and of course making these big explosions and they they manage to make their way through uh but shortly after that the wheel breaks off of the the wagon so uh Hawk is like, you know, we'll fix it. Just pop it right back on. They're like, the axle's broken. It's going to take... Uh, it's going to take till tomorrow to fix it. And if I know anything about, you know, the, the Oregon Trail, yeah. uh, uh -oh. you know, they should have brought extra ones with them. <laughs> Can't they just get You have died of dysentery. <laughs> you Can have died from Uber? breed stabbing Uber? you. Your wagon Uber has showed up. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> so Hawk and Breed and uh, I think it was Red. I can't remember who it was that got stabbed. Red. Uh, they're like, well, we're going to ride ahead. You guys fix this up. 
but you get it, better get it there. And like, I don't really get a sense of what the job was except for this scene where he talks I about it. I don't know either. But go, yeah. Like, because there's usually like when they have a thing where they're like, "Oh, we're gonna get ready to do whatever. Like, we're gonna rob this train." You know, we have a standoff that's nearer the train. Right. And so he's like, yeah. "We gotta go get that gold." Uh, you know, we yeah, gotta they get don't, there by they, Friday. They needed a, a a Basil exposition because they only mention it very briefly with a lot of action going on. But <laughs> basically, Hawk is planning on doing a bank robbery. Yeah. And they've stolen this nitro from the army <laughs> in Indian territory where it was vulnerable. And now they're going to slip back over somewhere over the border into Arkansas and rob a bank and then probably slip back into Indian Territory or head to Mexico and get away. It seemed like that didn't come through in the script well, very it, well. I, I took it as that they were going to rob a, like some sort of like a like a federal shipment of gold. Well, I knew it's that. It's not just yeah. money, cash. Yeah. It's just gold. It just seemed odd. Like it was just like, yeah. I hear you on that. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't focus on that at least a little bit more. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, it's only like one or two lines of dialogue. You could easily miss it with everything that's going on. That's okay. definitely a flaw of the script. I was too busy listening to uh, Catherine Hepburn be preachy. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, so they're like, oh, well, look, we got to get things ready. We got to go ahead. So they are going to take off. Um, with the wagon still staying behind to get fixed. Yeah. Now, in the meantime, um, while all that has happened, Rooster goes to drop off Eula and uh, Wolf at, back in Arkansas, and uh, they, Eula basically buys uh, a rifle, uh, the whole like the what you call it, the sheath or scabbard. Yeah. And some shells. Uh, and it's like, all right, let's go. And so she and Wolf go chase Rooster down because she's going to go with them to go Revenge. see these guys. Yeah. yeah. See these guys either hang or brought to justice. Right. Uh, yeah, and she just, and, just le- le- lectured Rooster about uh, pacifism and not living by the sword. And now yes. she's going out for vengeance, vengeance. With, her, yeah. with her child ward tagging along with her. <laughs> and they wasted a bunch of time by crossing back into Arkansas, going to the trading post, if she was just going to come along with him anyways. <laughs> that's very that's Yeah, that's true. true. That's very true. But, like, a lot of this plot kind of, like, it it progresses to, not the plot, but, like, the character development yeah. pro- progresses very oddly through this whole thing where it contradicts each other just like that. And I'm just like, that drives me nuts. Yeah. In this movie. Now, okay, you so... Know what I mean? So a thing that drives me crazy in movies, um, especially, like, movies that are, like, pre... like, combustible engine type movies, right. <laughs> is the speed at which people travel. Yeah. I, I, I get why you easier. why you do this, but, like, because you don't want to be like, oh, it just took us forever to get here or there. But um, I use this, using this example, uh, the TV show Rome that was out years ago, um, not not picket fences. Rome, Wisconsin. Uh, no, which is a fictional. He and Correct. Chris can tell us it's fictional. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, no, but this is uh. So the show Rome, they would be like, well, we go. Ha- we have to go let Caesar know this, and then they would be like, all right, I'm here. I just <laughs> I traveled here from Gaul. But even like, that happens now. I'm you sorry. Watch... You went from Spain to Rome. But that in happens like now. Okay. Twenty like minutes. Twenty four. They're like we're we're all the way across. You know, Los Angeles in, in, you know, 30 minutes? Yeah. No, don't think so. Yeah. And that's what, this kind of happens here, where I'm just like, wait a minute, how, what, what, like, so, uh, we're just going to go ahead to Arkansas, uh, we're going to pop back there and then pop back to Oklahoma, but catch up with the people who have like a day or plus, day or two ahead of us. Okay. Yeah, yeah it moves real fast. But yeah. Well, yeah, that, that's like definitely a flaw of the script, because they're not establishing how many times these people are crossing into what states. And, um, I mean, it, it kind of makes a little bit of sense because the wagon and them having to be slow with the nitro yes. traveling with yeah. the na- wagon makes a little bit of sense that, that rooster could get the drop on him, but still he wasted a bunch of time going to the trading post. And, um, 
that's like I said, that's the one big drawback of this movie. It's obviously it's been written and rewritten, and it's not based on a book like True Grit was. So some of these things that an author might have had time to sit down and be like, oh, that doesn't make much sense. I need to work this out better. They yeah. just movie magic, logic, you know, turn off your brain. Yeah. yeah. Oh well, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. No, I and I I do like I. I try to let those things go, but I'm always like, ah, what? Like Why? sometimes it's just such an odd. Yeah, it's such an odd. Like I'm just like that seems really weird for this story. Um, it's just like the same thing with people always having money. They always have a job that like oh yeah they don't much. a don't need to go to and b they just have tons of money from it that they don't have to worry about that you know part of the calculation of life. Um. So, uh, they managed to uh as they as in rooster and eula and wolf uh make it to uh they end up catching up with the wagon which is has been fixed um but they're like oh crap you know the the <laughs> the posse that he thought he was going to get never shows up when he doesn't even really wait around for them that much um, he when he does go back to Arkansas, I thought, well, maybe they'll be there. Nope, well, there's who nobody. Was, in that? was it was Turtle? Oh no, that's Entourage. Never mind. Yeah, that's I got, Entourage. I get Posse and Entourage confused. It, it's easy. It's easy yeah. to remember. Um, but, but I just imagine like the Posse is like trying to catch up with them. They're like, oh no, he's back in Arkansas. Okay, we'll head that way. <laughs> we'll they're head like, that way. They're always just hey, like a day's ride. Why did they go to him. the trade post? Just. My mom always told me, just wait here, and we, I will find you. Uh, well, well, that's basically when he, he got his badge back earlier. That's part of the reason. is because The judge promi- promised him a posse, but he he says those guys are, you know, lily livers. If they were really going to, you know, they were really going to saddle up and hunt down these guys, they would have left already, and you would not you would have these guys already. Me. That's yeah. why yeah. judge and listen, yeah. because they know... Rooster's the only one drunk or crazy enough to go after these guys. Yeah. I also wondered if it was partially, you know, also nobody is crazy enough to work with Rooster Cogburn on it. Like, he seems to... He seems to lose partners pretty well. Well, yeah, Um, and there's the personal angle, too, because he... He, uh... He was the mentor to Breed when they were in the army together during the Civil War. So there's a personal angle to it, too. And yeah. uh, before they catch up with the ba- bandits, uh, Sister Goodnight is laying it on pretty thick, teasing Rooster about his lifestyle. And she brings up General Lee. And, how- oh, General Lee was a Christian. And Rooster's kind of like, yeah, so? <laughs> And, and he has that little dig about too about uh, heaven help us if the women get the vote because yes. she's going yes. on on doing her eastern you know big city liberal moralizing and yes. basically yeah. you know shitting all over that. But if you didn't catch the fact of you know where he was coming from when he had his mega uh, his mega <laughs> racist speech to the Chinaman after the judge came in the beginning of the movie. Now you you should know by now where he's coming from. Yes. Right. So we stopped at the the trade post. We got uh, yeah. we got some weapons. We yes. got our you know make America great again hat for Rooster Cogburn. Yeah. So we're going. We're yeah. we're doing good. So we they we end up making it. We we find the wagon. But I remember when uh, go back to that voting thing. I remember when she said or he said that you were like God. <laughs> I went yarg. yarg. Okay. <laughs> he goes. He goes, heaven help us if they get the right to vote to Wolf, who's probably like, just leave me out of this. Yeah, right? Like, uh, okay. Um, but it's funny because, like, I've I've seen that on a lot of things. Like, uh, so I'm a big comic book nerd. Uh, and I was reading, I have an episode, or an issue of X-Men. It's like X-Men number 18 or something. Uh, they fight this character named Blastar. And uh, Jean Grey, uh, Marvel Girl, is giving instructions she's like guys do this do this like telling them what to do and Iceman goes geez we should never have given these dames the right to vote <laughs> and i went whoa like what the hell is that like, whoa, Iceman. <laughs> it was it was just 
it was awkward. I had to read well, it a couple that's, times. That's the ironic thing, too, is I think that is more modern, and by modern, I mean 1975, yeah. social commentary yeah. seeping through the script. Yeah. Because this is the, you know, feminism and yeah. trying to get the Equal Rights Amendment passed, and there's this backlash against feminism, but at the actual, you know, time that this was set, people in the West were a lot more liberal in their values, and Western states were some of the first states to give women the vote, like Wyoming, and yeah. even have women politicians. So as long as women, you know, they thought they pulled their weight, they there was more of a lax attitude in the West, but this is more modern backlash that is yeah. seeping into the script. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? Like he, uh, as in John Wayne too, like he was, did a lot of stuff like that. There was, I can't remember what the Western was. Was it the Oxbow incident and then high noon? No, he was in the, was he in high noon? No, no, he was in, Oh God. High noon came out. And he thought no, he did the, the he thought counter, a, counterpart. Yes, he thought a guy a guy being on his own in high noon was just about the you know with where Anti-American nobody would thing. where nobody would help him. I thought that's was, how Rio Bravo came. Okay. Yes, that is. It's Rio Bravo. Yeah, he was like that's just the most un-American thing. So Basically, then he, Rio Bravo is the conservative answer to high noon. Yes, that's what they were saying. Yeah, and so that's what like he gets involved with a lot of commentary yeah. stuff through these movies as well. So. Yeah. Um, so we're on the posse. Yeah, so we we gets up to this ridge, and of course he's like, "All right, you guys, like spread out, go go look around, let's see what's going on." He gives uh, uh, you know they he distributes some weapons. They uh, he gets up on this ridge, and basically he's calling down to the guys and saying, "We're I'm up here with this posse, you know, we're we're not letting you get out of here." And uh, while he's talking to him, they one of the guys breaks off and is trying to sneak around to get the drop on Brewster. And so he's moving around, and that's when uh, Eula shoots him in the back, shoots right. this guy in the back. And then uh, Eula and Wolf start firing their guns off to make it seem like there's a, a bunch of people. Yeah. There's an actual posse. So all of uh, and they open fire on some of the guys. They kill some of Hawk's men, uh, but some of the others escape. Uh, yeah, get away from the posse. He says, "Great shot, Wolf." Yeah, and he was like, "It wasn't me." Yeah, you know. Oh, hey, it was me. Yeah, but hey, she's a badass Boston she, chick. It reminds me of like when when when, <laughs> when when watching um, Godless. It reminds me of Merritt Weaver's character. Yes, in Godless a lot. Yeah. Where she just takes, you know, no holds bar. You yeah. Know. There's, I, I find it interesting, like, a lot of times, uh, Rooster is Probably like... a lesbian. <laughs> I mean. Rooster's like, hey, and is, like, talking to Wolf, like, Wolf is gonna be, you know, he's the person to talk to, he's another guy, and Wolf's like, leave yeah. me alone, please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Yeah, and <laughs> she's the one Tony's who's like, stories. who do I need to, whose ass do I need to <laughs> kick? <laughs> The uh so, in any case, so now they have the wagon, with everything in it. So, uh, so they now are going to take it and get it back. So I think they're heading back the, uh, back into Arkansas at this point. Yeah, because there's two objectives. He's supposed to recover the nit- nitro for the army, which he gets like a five hundred dollar bounty, and then yes, he's supposed yeah. to bring back the bandits. Alive, and then he gets a thousand dollars, brings all the bandits back alive. Yeah, which that that ship is sailing fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's getting getting less. Uh, the prospect is not getting great. Um, so they start heading back. Uh, in the meantime, the guys head on to go see Hawk, and uh, says, "Hey, you know, here he had a posse. Here's what happened." Yeah. And uh, they head back. Uh, Breed kind of looks through the tracks and is like, there's no posse here. Um, and so uh, they they ride on. 
basically they're right around the town. Talk and breed and the guy who got stabbed. Yeah. And uh the guy who got stabbed is falling apart quick. Like he's losing blood. Yeah. I think it's is it Hawk who ends up shooting him? I think so. Yeah, it's just the three of them. Hawk, Breed, Hawk. and uh, the guy with the stab wound who's going back into town to see Doc. Yeah. And they're supposed to drop the one guy off to see the Doc, and then Breed and Scout. Um, Breed and uh, Hawk are supposed to um, scout out the, the bank that they're going to rob or whatever. Yes. Oh, that's what it is. But he's yeah. so pissed off about this news. He goes and shoots the guy who's been stabbed because they're slowing him down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he falls off his horse and he's like, please help. And so he just shoots him. Uh, and basically just says, yeah, you know, like leave him to nature. Right. It's fine. Uh, so the, uh, so they, they end up camping. I think this is like the first night scene that we have. Oh, is this more, this is the real big sexual tension. Between um, John Wayne's character and Catherine Hepburn's character, we yeah. would say. Well, and they've they've been getting closer and chummy. Oh, they've and... been. Oh, yeah. I want to see my golden pond. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, when they're tra- when they're traveling, Rooster's giving her crap and teasing yeah. her about her Yankee accent and Yankee her accent. Boston schooling, and then she at- she's giving him crap about not being a Christian and not reading his Bible. And he says, I got a big Bible, you know. And she goes, it's not about the size of your Bible. It's about the with the uh, the contents or the knowledge yeah. inside of it. Yeah. So he's talking about point, his big Bible she, penis. Does yeah. She also, yeah, right, great. Right. Does she also ask what his uh, Christian name is at this point? Is that or right, they, they, They're talking about his name. His name is Reuben. Yeah. yeah, his name is Reuben. Yeah. Uh, but don't you repeat that. To which she just constantly she calls him Reuben. Reuben. No. Yeah. Uh, um. So is this the back rub scene too? Which the oh my back. Oh uh, yeah. Well, so they they end up uh, they get there and they're talking and she's talking about how oh or no she's she's gonna go take a bath. Right. Uh, they, they're she, gonna go hunt for turkey. Yeah. So he's like, I think I heard something. We'll go get some wood or get whatever the camp set up, and then Wolf, you and me, are, we're gonna go get uh, we're gonna go get this turkey. We heard a turkey back the other way let's go get it and we'll get her a real nice dinner and he's like okay sure whatever like wolf wolf is just along for the ride and so they they go out they come back they couldn't get the turkey but they got a possum and uh but she has killed She's a turkey like, yeah, She's, do. yeah she has I've got a turkey which is ridiculous it's like it is a full size like you know bread to be Giant breasted, like modern day turkey, not like a wild yeah, that, turkey. That's not a wild turkey, and she's already shot it, plucked yeah. it, and is cooking it over a spit for them. Yeah, <laughs> in an amount of time. Yes. and also took a bath. And it is in the the skin on it is nice and golden and crisp. And crisp. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> and so, they're like, well, you can skin the possum or whatever, and we'll make you know possum stew. Yeah. Uh, which is only the second worst sounding stew in this whole movie. <laughs> the first one, they're like, well, Martha has some fish oh, stew. I was like, ew. Like, what was it like? <laughs> no, she said, uh, like, what was the fish that she had? Like some, I don't know, it was carp, carp or something? Yeah. Right? Like carp oh, stew? catfish stew. Catfish stew, yeah. And I was like, pass. I have some pass. catfish stew. That sounds awful, especially because it's like 100 degrees out. Well, and like, I'm sorry, like, I don't imagine boiling fishes. <laughs> well, where'd it go? Mm, it's just fish slush now. Mm, yum. <laughs> um, delicious fish slush. Um, it's a new flavor from Sonic. It is. After pickle slush. Yum. Fish slush. <laughs> so funny, if, if people would still buy that. Probably. They would. What even is then this? They would go. They just buy they, it. They would go gross. I'm like, yeah, duh. Gross. Is. Taste this. I'll just have other people drink it. Um. Anyway, so. That night, everybody's tired. Uh, oh, my back hurts. Yeah, she's like, oh, my back hurts from riding. We and get from it. You want to fuck her. My head doing you this. You want to fuck him? Whoa. Come on. And Guess who was coming to dinner? Nah. And so he's like, let me rub your shoulders. Well, he's I guess he's coming at dinner, but go ahead. And he said something about, like, uh, something about rubbing her backside. 
Yeah, she's complaining about uh, being on the horse so long and her, her backside hurts. He's like just about rubbing her backside. And she was just like, the look on her face, she's like, oh. Mm-hmm. Like, um, she's like, that'll be enough of that, thanks. <laughs> and so she lays yeah, down. That... <laughs> she lays down. He, he has a nice bed laid out for her. And he puts his lariat around where she's sleeping, supposedly because that keeps out snakes and other insects and stuff. I, I snakes and this? worms, yeah. Yeah, to that keep sounds... I don't know that that's true. I do it every time, you know, we go to bed. You don't. You just don't know it. No, that's a ring of salt you oh, like place right. around that just yeah, to make sure <laughs> to, keep, to keep the demons out. Well, yeah, you have Sam to. and Dean. Um. So. So then he tells Wolf, like, "Hey, we're gonna have. We're going to have our. Uh, we need to basically have our. Oh, the uh, stakeout. W- like, have a watch. Like, yeah, watch. Like, you get the first watch." Till midnight, and then I'm gonna sleep, and I'll take the next. So they're watch going to from brunch there. at first watch. Yes. Oh wow. And so, Wolf is on the first first round, and then uh, Rooster's gonna take the second one. So Rooster yeah, beds Wolf, down. Wolf is terrible at this job. Yeah. You the, have the one next thing is to do. Uh, Eula and is sleeping, and Rooster is sleeping, and then it cuts to I think Wolf sleeping. But we all do when he said <laughs> Wolf. You get the first shift. We all knew that kid's going to fall asleep. Yeah, that's never a good deal. And so uh, the the bandits, they grab Wolf. And uh, thankfully, he had given, uh, you know, Wolf ends up screaming and getting their attention. So they wake up. Well, uh, he's got, he gave Wolf. Like a uh, uh, what do you call it? The pepper box. Yeah. The uh, yeah, fi- uh, a five shot Derringer yeah. that he got from a sporting woman, which is old West code for hooker. Yep. And a fat one at that, who had been shot twice with it and survived. <laughs> but she was so, she was fat enough that it didn't actually hit anything important. So he was just like he gave it to her earlier to protect Eula with. Uh, so the guy ends up he shoot will shoot some the guy who's holding him. And manages to run all the way over to Rooster and Eula, who are like hunkered down behind the uh, the nitro. And normally that'd be nerve wracking, except right. Hawks like do not shirt, do not shoot that because if it goes off, we're screwed because that there goes our plan. Uh, and so he's like, well, we can wait till we get better shots on you. And uh, so Rooster's like, all right, you hitch the wagon, the horses to the wagon. While we kind of, you know, distract them over here, uh, Wolf, you know, runs up and scatters the outlaws' horses so they can't follow them. And then in the meantime, uh, Rooster had set up a uh, Gatlin gun. Yes, which I love. I I love the use of Gatlin guns in movies. Um. I actually am always just excited because to to be like, oh man, Gatling guns were real. Like I I just love that it was a that we had these. So it's like a top loader. He has the giant cartridge that he like or the magazine that he clips in. Uh, and I think Eula actually runs it. And Eula like, you know, just sprays fire all over the the hills, and it manages to cut a tree down with it even. So. Uh, she she takes down the tree and he's like, well, you know, see, we got this. You know, we're gonna get out of here. Uh, he they end up taking off, and uh, you know, can't be followed. So uh, they get to uh, I think that's when they get to the the ferry the next day. Hey, what do you mean by that? <laughs> no, no, they're tra- they're traveling and uh. They're having a conversation. It takes them a while to get to the river, cross back over. Right. Yeah. But yeah, he's he's kind of flirting with her, um, asking her about her age and weight and calling yeah, her a spirited right. woman. Yeah. <laughs> Which is uh, really poor flirting. And then they stop. They stop for a little bit and uh, they're resting for a little bit. And he's. Uh, doing his accounting for his expenses and he's basically 
cooking the books and she's um chiding him about you know you're gonna get caught and blah 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 you know that's not accurate or you can't prove that or and he's just like you know it's, it is what it is what it is it, it pays for my whiskey basically yeah yeah and she's bringing up more about his uh confederate past and then he reveals that he he had been in the confederate uh uh confederate cavalry and he had been a uh, with bloody bill a- ba- anderson who was an infamous southern gorilla yeah who uh crossed the border into kansas and murdered a bunch of people in lawrence kansas which was a hotbed of abolitionists and then when they didn't get what they wanted uh out of kansas they crossed the border into missouri which was a confederate state but occupied at the union at the time and then they uh, attacked a bunch of um, uh, Union um, troops that were s- s- um, stationed in Centralia. I think it was Missouri. Mm-hmm. So yeah. They're I- infamous war criminals, basically, that he rode with during the war. Yeah. But he's talking about it like these are just just the boys, you know? Yeah, right. Chris, can I say I love that you love history? Like, it's amazing to hear you talk about it. Like, it really is. Like, I love it. Yeah. It, especially it, this time, because I'm not, like, I, I'm not a big, like, history buff, and especially this time. But, like, hearing you describe it, I'm like, yeah. man, I want to go back and, like, learn more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hadn't, I, like, in me, I hadn't dug as much into the history piece of, like, yeah. this film. Because it is, like... But just the West itself, and yeah. the Westerns and stuff. Yeah. And, but I'm, I'll say, too, like, they... I don't think it's they're not like out and out with it, but like the mentions that they have in there are enough so you get like a sense of what's happening, but like without necessarily having to know the entire background. Yeah. But that's even better when you do, like with what you're sharing here. Yeah. It's awesome. I love it. Thank you so much. Oh no problem. I I just they they, they mention this and they kind of brush over it, and if you kind of don't, don't know. know the history. You, you you get the general outline that he was rode with the Confederates during the war and yeah. everything, but you you don't know what what type of people he was actually involved with, and right. that might you know be the reason why he's so drunk and messed so up drunk now, and, you know? Yeah, yeah. gruff and yeah, and on his own so much. Yeah, yeah, and like um, yeah, I mean you you get a you get a better sense of of him through those conversations as well. Mm-hmm. So, um. But eventually we do make it to the to the ferryman. We do. Yeah. But please don't call me that. <laughs> uh so the the old the, the guy who owns the raft or the ferry, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. So it's basically he's quite a character. It's but it's, he's for, a character actor. Yes. Yeah. It is. Um he's the same guy from uh Cool Hand Luke. Oh yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. We, we yep. got to say what we got here is a failure to communicate. Yeah. Uh same guy. Strother Martin? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, basically, they were originally they were thinking, we're going to get across, uh, we're just going to go across the river. And then I think they were like, well, we got to get moving. Yeah. we like, got to get some, some distance between us. Yeah. So we should probably go down the river. Yeah. And so... So they asked the ferry guy, what's the name of this raft? And he said, the African Queen, right? So they got That's the mini African queen. Yeah. yeah. Which uh, <laughs> the South African queen. Which Rooster was not excited about. No. The, uh, no, the, uh, <laughs> so, so they go, uh, basically he's like, hey, w- instead of taking this just across, we're going to take the ferry. We're going to head down river with it. Sure. And for, originally the guy says no. And he's like, he talks about it, He's like, I don't care one way or the other. I hate people in general. <laughs> like, I just, you know, want money. Like, that's all there is to this. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, this is the cor- court psyops of the movies. Like, I, I don't like <laughs> I don't like law enforcement. I don't like people in my business. Just pay me my money so I can take you across the river and leave me alone. Yeah. And they're like, nope, nope, Commodore, I'm taking your boat. And he's like, that's deal. And he's like, do you got a problem with that? <laughs> yeah. And he, he, yeah, he pulls the pistol out too, and like just like basically he's like, all right, fine, we can do it this way. He's like, nope, enjoy uh, the rapids. Yeah. 
And so, and the ferryman and, the whole time has been busting sisters' chops about being a, you know, a Bible thumper and yeah. this or that, and you know, just after it Rooster, is court. it is cool, giving her crap about the same thing. Oh my God, it is cool. Yeah. And then Rooster sticks up for her. Yep. And even, and it's kind of interesting too. Like he's, he's like, I can tell. He's like, you're not a Navy man, are you? Or you're not like a, a you know, a, a sailor. And he's like, nope. And so this guy. Like it's kind of interesting. I get you, he basically says that he was a sailor, and you get this impression. Like I was kind of like, that's interesting. Like here's just a random like, like navy guy or like you know some sort of a, a boatman like out in the middle of wherever. I don't know. It just seemed interesting to me. I also find it funny that like was was he a big character actor enough to to warrant the uh, the end of the opening credits where it's like and this guy has yeah. this guy. Yeah, I like, think so. He must yeah, have been he's appeared in a ton of westerns and Cool Hand Luke, so he's right, yeah. he's pretty recognizable by okay. this point. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's like seventy-five. Yeah. So they're heading down the river, uh, and they have a pretty interesting setup. They got all their stuff kind of like kind of almost like a little U-shape, like fortification made of nitroglycerin. Yeah, sure. Well, they know that nobody's gonna shoot it. Uh, and then they have uh, at the I front. Think, I think as they were going, I was like, uh, "Let's head to the Mosquito Coast." I don't know why I said that, but I thought it was uh, at the front they have the Gatlin gun set up. Yeah, uh, which is awesome. Yeah, and so I was like, "Okay, this thing's like a a lean, mean, you know, machine." So, uh, so they're heading down, and uh, part of the way down there. Uh, it is uh, well, maybe this is red. I can't remember. I can't keep track of the the like bee minions. Yeah, that's what. Look, if it's not hawk, the, we forgot. Like there was like a shootout between hawk. And, I think it's coming up, right when they're on the raft, and, and it's hawk and rooster, and they keep going yeah. hawk, rooster, hawk. Like it's yeah. just like we get it. Yeah, you're a bunch of birds. Yes. Uh. So. Uh. So like it's a uh, breed, yeah. Breed and this other guy ride along, and the guy says, "Well, they'll be coming down the river here soon." So yeah, they're coming coming up on a bend, and and one of Hawk's men he he uh, tries to convince Breed, "Well, they're gonna come up on this bend. Let's just ambush them here, and then we can get get the nitro, and then we'll just rob the bank ourselves, and you know, yeah, because we can keep all the money ourselves." Yeah. And so he's like, okay, well, uh, he's like, I'm going to throw this ro- uh, this rope across the river, tie it across the river. When they come up on it, I'm going to pull it up a little bit so they'll get caught up on it. Yeah. And then uh, he'll either want to, like, put it over them or try to get it down or cut it so they can get through. Did they do the same thing on the River Wild? I swear they did. Probably. Kevin Bacon. <laughs> but when they do Bacon that, <laughs> when they do that. We will, uh, we'll just mow them down. Yeah. And so, um, the, they get caught up on there. Uh, the bandit gets ready to shoot, uh, Rooster. And Bree just kills the guy. And shoots him in the back. And shows himself to Rooster and says, hey, look. You know, you saved my yeah. life years ago. So, you know what? I think we're, we're even now. And so Even Stevens. Yep. And so he leaves it at that and uh lets them go on their merry way. So um Was that the Shia LaBeouf show, Even Stevens? I think so. <laughs> I believe it was. Yeah. With Christy Carlson Romano. Yeah. Who was uh in the sequel to uh what was the <laughs> the, the skating movie. The skating movie? Yeah. The, the Olympic skating, skating movie. Oh, uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, God, what was that? Oh. Blades. No. no. <laughs> I can't no. remember. It's going to drive me nuts now. Yeah, that's fine. Um, who is a Deuce alumni? So there you go. Sure. Um, so the, uh, so they keep heading down river, and then in the, the meantime. cutting edge. The cutting edge. Cutting edge. Yeah. Thank you. Cutting edge, too. The best one. Um, so Breed heads back to the outlaw camp. And Hawk is like, well, where is everything? Like, what the hell's happening? 
And he says, oh, yeah, so-and-so was going to try to screw you over. Um, you know, but, you know, the rooster got away. Yeah, goes, we had a gunfight with Rooster, and, and yeah. oh. Rooster shot your man, and I barely got away. Yeah, that's what it is. And he goes, okay. He's like, let me see your gun. And so he shows it to him, and uh, he's like, only one shot. Like, one shot is gone. So, Because yeah. you he, only need one shot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's like, so, you know, you lied to me. And he's like, basically, he kind of does, breeds like, so what if I did? <laughs> he just kind it's of is like, like whatever. He knew what his what was gonna happen. Yeah, he, he had I mean, to have he known. Knew. And so he went out on his terms. Yeah. Well, uh. Well, that's the best part too. Is is as Hawk gets so mad, he kicks him off a goddamn yeah. goddamn cliff, and it's like turns into a ta- Italian giallo with a, a a dummy fall just going down this yeah, yeah, this cliff. Weird. It's awesome. It it, it it reminded me of uh. There's an old 70s Jonah Hex uh, comic where uh, this old woman is basically – she's actually the mastermind behind this bandit gang, and she's in a wheelchair, and Jonah Hex c- catches up with her, and she's, for whatever reason, at a cliffside, and she's, you know, what are you going to do to me, you know, Hex? You know, I'm an old cripple up woman. Nobody's going to, you know, leave you or whatever, and he just kicks her off. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it reminded me of that so much I just started laughing when I saw it. I know I went where well, he starts tumbling down the hill and I was like, Okay, he's tumbling down a hill and then like in the next shot it's like whoa like falling over the cliff. Oh my god. I was like, Whoa, that escalated quickly. Like I it just didn't I, it was like I did not expect it. Um so but I knew Breed was gonna die, but I you know, did not see that one coming. Yeah. So um, so, uh, they go through the rapids now, so, uh, Rooster and, uh, Eula and Wolf, they go through the rapids, uh, they are, you know, heading down river, I think at one point, uh, so basically they know that, uh, oh, as they go through the rapids, they are, keep slamming into stuff, and they lose the Gatlin gun. And Eula, yeah, it, Eula's like, oh, <laughs> the Gatlin gun, the, the gun, gun, the gun. What do you want him to do? <laughs> oh, let's hit reverse and go back and get the gun. Well, and then, like, Wolf falls off, and she's like, hmm, okay. Like, she does oh. not. Oh, uh, well, it's think, just Wolf. I think when they pull the Wolf, you go, <laughs> did you get the gun? Like, yeah. She... she <laughs> She throws a rope to Wolf, and they pull him back up. I went, did you get the gun? <laughs> no, but this is ridiculous because it was already stretching credibility that that Gatling gun on a tripod was yeah. going to make it downriver, you know, sitting on this raft. But now they're on this raft loaded with nitro, and they're smashed. It's not like, oh, we're barely yeah. missing these rocks. They are smashing, smashing into rocks on these rapids. And losing everything. Well, and I'm really surprised. That I was, like, waiting for the raft to come apart. Yeah, or something like that. Because it is like just, that. like, logs strapped to one another. And I'm like, yeah, okay. and this, this isn't sticks of, of TNT in, in boxes. This is liquid nitroglycerin in crates of sawdust <laughs> that we got to be careful with our <laughs> transporting on its ra- uh, a wagon, but we can go down the rapids. No problem with this stuff. <laughs> Earlier, we saw somebody throw one at the side of a hill, and it was like a hand grenade. And, like, they're just like, that's fine. Just flip it around. If at I'm first, trying. when he said the it's crates of TNT, I kept thinking of, like, old old shows on TNT. Yeah. Like, it's it's boxes of, like, uh, DVDs of The Closer, for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Rizzolian Isles. <laughs> uh, so... so uh, they make it down the river, and finally they get out to where they're like, okay, I think we're all right. <coughs> but then, <laughs> then I think they they know that they're like, ugh, they're probably like waiting there for us. Like r- as soon as we come around there, that's where they're gonna yeah. get us. So they make the genius plan. Oh, because Breed told them he's gonna wait for you down so there. So they make a genius plan of like. <coughs> yeah. So he he takes like, uh, he takes like a crate full of like, I don't know if it's ammo or the guns or whatever it is, but he like weighs the the raft down with it. So they stop moving forward. He uses it as an anchor. 
And then they start loading the boxes of TNT into the water so that they start or TNT for the nitro into the water so it's, it's floating down there. And then uh, he cuts the rope and uh, they start floating behind it. So like as the TNT gets out there or the nitro gets out there way ahead of them, they're like, oh, hey, the nitro, they must have died. Oh, they must, yeah. Yeah, they and must like, have the tipped stuff's over still and, floating yeah. down here. The nitro is It's been fine. shaking didn't around make it in past the, the rapids. rapids. This seems like a good, yeah. let's pick it up, but it's fine. Uh, and so they, they pick it up, or they, they're standing near it, and then they see the raft, and Eula and Wolf are like, it's Rooster, he was hurt in the rapids. And so, you know, White flag, white flag. Yeah, will you help us? He's like, sure, we'll help you. Died Straight to hell. Flag. Like, I think he says that. He's like, oh, we'll help you. Yeah. Uh, we'll help you. And he goes, like, straight to hell. Or something like that. Kind of laughs with the others. And they're like, ha, ha, ha. Everything's worked out. And that's when Rooster stands up and starts shooting up the Shoot nitro. Now. Yeah, now. And so he starts shooting up the nitro. And just, it's just blowing up everywhere. And which we've been, frankly, waiting to happen like this entire movie. The whole time. Like every time I was like, oh, they're going to blow this. Nope. They're not using the nitro. Okay. Yeah. So I've been waiting for this. Finally blows it up. I was a little I was a little upset. Like by today's standards, I'm pretty sure we would have gotten some people blowing up into like slush. Uh, yeah. Well, which. which yeah. Human slush is the new flavor from that's uh, the Sonic. New, that's for... <laughs> the new flavor from Sonic. The <laughs> lady, that lady's going to be having, well, we got human stew now. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Oh, human stew. Mm. Um, Bandit stew. <laughs> here you go. So, so the uh, he's, of course, Rooster then is pissed because he's like, ah, damn it. I needed them to get my money. <laughs> right. And he knows he's oh, going to well. get in trouble because he killed everyone again. <laughs> but uh, but here's a here's the thing. Hawk... Is needs this nitro to rob a bank. He he he. This is just he needed to die because he's an idiot. Because yeah, once he saw those five boxes of nitro float down the river, he should have told his men scoop them up and let's get the hell out yeah, of here. Because that's all you needed. Do you really need a raft load or a rag a wagon full of nitro for a bank robber robbery? Unless he's planning a string of bank robberies. What are you going to do, blow up the bank with the money inside of it? You, you only need a little bit of nitro to crack a right. safe. Yeah. Yeah, and he was going to totally, like, level the town with it and then hope that some gold was left over after it was done. Now, when 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 the nitro went off and the, the camera kept looking around, I was like, what, is, like, uh, Jason going to come out of the rat, like, from underneath the water and be like, ah. <laughs> yeah. like, why are you holding the camera? Like, you know, is, is Hawk still alive? Like, that's what I thought at first. I was waiting for, like, some final confrontation yeah. between the two Nothing. of them. Nothing. It goes nope. flip. He right, did it. Done. Right to the uh, courtroom scene. Yep. So immediately we're in the courtroom, <clears throat> which I imagine is, like, part of me was, like, I just imagined this was, like, Rooster comes in and he's telling all of this. Like, it's this fantastic story right. about how it was life or death. They survived these rapids when, in essence... He probably just went up and just killed everybody. Mm -hmm. Like he's coming up with coming up with this grandiose story, and now Eula is backing him up. Um, but so she is, of course. He mentioned before that the judge has a Bible, you know that that the judge goes through. Eula is, you know, going through the Bible and like yeah. using this to convince that hey, Rooster was doing the right thing, like. God doesn't intervene here, but he puts people here to do that, and that's what Rooster did. And then, uh, you know, he's like the warrior Gideon, and they like, going through everything. <laughs> uh, and then she yeah, the judge, the judge is just rolling his eyes at this point, but she's using her Bible, Bible foo, and when it's not working on the judge with her quote off, then then she claims I I was the one who killed the bandits. He didn't kill the bandits. Yeah, yeah. To which he's like he's like, oh my God, whatever. And then she says, she calls him Reuben. Reuben. And the judge is like, what? what? <laughs> Reuben. That's my favorite sandwich. So then he continues to call him Reuben after that. But it's like, then the judge is like, Haha, we're friends now that I know your human first name. <laughs> like, it's, like, that's the rule. Like, if I only know you by your nickname, 
we're 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 not very good. But once I know your goofy first name, then we're fine. Yes. You've been reinstated then. So yeah, so yeah, he <laughs> basically he says he's like permanently reinstated. Uh and then Chin Li too uh says something in Chinese which I assume is Chinese. Uh, that or I did not understand it. Uh except for the word Ruben. He's like, Get out of here. <laughs> Just like send him <laughs> on. Um but as they leave, so Eula and Wolf end up leaving. And they say goodbye to Rooster. Uh, they're going to go with a bunch of settlers to rebuild Fort Ruby. Uh, but as they're leaving, she comes back and says that, you know, you're you're the best. You're the best man ever. You're like a credit to males. Um, you know, so, I, any woman would be proud to have you. And I'm proud to be your friend. And uh, and then she rides off. Yeah. And, and then Rooster. Always had to get the, she had to get had the, to last, get the last word, word in. So, yeah. And, and you've been deuced, you right? You've been deuced. There's your movie. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, that's what we thought of it, but let's hear what other people thought of it. Shadow Warrior? Yes. Papa Jim 1 gives it an 8 out of 10. Wayne and Hepburn Sparkle, which I'm thinking, if your name is Papa Jim, why are you using the word sparkle? But, hey, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Uh, not the best John Wayne movie, but a damn good one. He and Hepburn make it move along, and you can see the genuine chemistry between their characters. As the movie progresses, you can feel him come to understand and respect her, and you can feel her becoming more fond of him, regardless of his faults. He he finally admitting that being with her pleases him, and her final speech to him says it all. An enjoyable film all around. Um. So... <coughs> they may have been like the, they did not get along on set. No, no. She she was just like you're a bastard. <coughs> kind of. So the unknown eight three seven dash one. Okay. Which seems a little you know too much for your your, your name. I don't yeah. know. Was the unknown eight three seven taken? So you had to put a dash <coughs> one in there. Yes. I don't know, but they give it a five out of ten. Say a disappointing sequel, True Grit is one of the finest westerns ever made and definitely features John Wayne's best performance. In this film, the character uh, was perfectly made to suit him. Unfortunately, the sequel to T- True Grit is not a film that works so well. The plot of Rooster Cockburn, or for, of Rooster Cockburn, the plot of Rooster Cockburn is not particularly original, but then again, neither was True Grit. But you don't need an original plot to have a good movie. You need a movie with a plot that is developed and, and executed in the right manner. <coughs> Rooster Cockburn plays dull and slowly with characters that we really couldn't care less. And the climax that we really just come to come, that comes, uh, that we see, it just happens. And the climax <laughs> itself is one of the biggest downers I've ever stumbled upon. Great, thanks. Okay. That's nice. Thanks, I The Unknown. I, I guess there is a reason why you're the unknown. Well, I get that though. That's because that's what I was saying. Where I thought well, more yeah, was going to happen, and then yeah, I mean, we're like, true. nope, nope, Hawk's done. <laughs> a lot of this plot kind of just kind of tangles itself, and just kind of look there. Uh, I don't know. I'll discuss this when we talk about our, our five questions. But okay, um, what do you want to get like? Into? Well, for the for the the part of like them kind of coming to an understanding of that we respect each other. Yeah. I thought it was kind of I don't know. I just <laughs> was like Sam and Diane. It just didn't make too much sense. Like opposites attract kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I felt like it, that was kind of forced a little bit. Yeah, it, it was definitely forced, but at least they didn't like end up being like lovers or she was yeah. taken with him at the end. That would have been really Really that would, heinous, that would but at cool. least yeah. they they kind of had a grudging respect at the end. But still, they they, they liked each other way too way too quickly. Yeah, I and agree. her it, some of her character twists, like being a crack shot. You know, okay, that might be possible that she's a woman living in the West that she learned how to shoot. But her whole pacifist, uh, I want revenge for my my dead reverend father, who was my same age as my brother that didn't make a lot of sense. No, it doesn't. <laughs> so why don't we do our five questions? Yeah. Okay? Well, I want to get into this. So yeah. 
Um, so we can go ahead and, and answer and then, you know, give you a moment to think here too, Chris. Um, sure. So that way you're not put on the spot. But, um, okay, uh, Bradley, why don't you start out here? What's your, uh, what was your favorite part of the movie? Uh, one of my favorite scenes, of course, is what we talked about earlier with the whole Catherine Hepburn scene and the hawk. Hawk and her with the whole shooting at the feet and she mm-hmm. didn't even blink. She was like Yoda. I'm like, I was like, wow, like. How awesome is that? Um, a lot of times when John Wayne was on the screen without <coughs> Catherine Hepburn, yeah. it was like he was hamming it up. But once H- Catherine Hepburn came into the scene, I felt like that restrained him a little bit. Because yeah. even though they might not have got along, I think John Wayne did have some respect for Catherine Hepburn just for being Catherine Hepburn and vice versa. Yeah, Because you have two powerhouses on a set. You know, they probably are going to butt heads, but they probably are going to have at least some respect for each mm-hmm, other, too. Mm-hmm. So I think that his performance got better once she was on screen with him. Yeah. So I guess my my favorite part is actually kind of kind of Catherine Hepburn. I don't know. That's mine. Yeah. And I think, honestly, I think that's my favorite part, too. Um, I know that they, they had other people they talked about giving it to, uh, the role. But, like, I think that she's got this, like, professionalism about her that when she came in and she was, like, doing these lines, look, like, the, she's done far better scripts in her day. Oh, yeah. Right? But the stuff that she did, like, the, again, the the badass, you know, standing up while he's firing at her feet, I mean, somebody else may portray that differently, but, man, she was... I just love how tough she was, tough as nails, and I actually believed it with her. Yeah, that's the thing. If like, it, was, it was more dimensional when I saw that from her, let alone like if Maggie Smith was doing it, maybe I wouldn't have have believed it as much. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I also think she'd have portrayed it differently. Yeah, that's true. Um, with maybe this kind of like little bit of desperation or like a, she was scared but standing up. Yeah. No, I believe like Catherine Hepburn's just like, you know, f- fuck off. Don't with fuck this. off. Don't fuck with me. Yeah. I'm a woman of God. Don't fuck with yeah, me. Yeah, I, I believe when she does it. Yeah. What about you, Chris? Yeah, I I think her, her performance is really underrated. Like you said, she's kind of slumming it, but her and John Wayne at this time, their their careers are at nearing their end. So they're, uh, they're when, when they're together on screen, it, it is. They do have a, a good kind of a foil relationship. I just... I wish the script had been, you know, a little bit yeah, more polished. Where her progression to liking him and her, him liking her, wasn't so quick and so forced. Mm-hmm. But them kind of sparring with each other verbally, you know, him comparing, you know, women to horses and uh, her, you know, <laughs> chiding him about drinking too much, and then he's like, "Oh, have you seen this world? There's a reason why people don't want to be sober." You know, they each kind of get their little little points across. I just wish it was, you know, uh, a little bit more um, deftly handled with some of the dialogue and yeah. some of the character development. I feel like we could have punched it. We could have punched those a little bit more. Yeah. Like we could have we could have actually seen them argue a little bit more to then kind of resolve it in a way. I don't know. The, but you're right, Chris. I, I agree with you on that. Yeah. All right. So next question: uh, Would you <laughs> reboot, continue, or cancel the series? Is, um, Just based off of this actually one. Actually, I read that they were going to do a third movie, but then the the failure of this movie and the age of uh, obviously um, John Wayne mm-hmm. made them not do it. Um, I say you can actually reboot this. Put like uh, Jeff Daniels, and I'm just saying this because of Godless, because we were watching that. Or someone in like a Rooster Cogburn kind of. Well, why don't you just make it off the the Coen Brothers one? You could make it off the Coen Brothers. You mean like Fargo? Yeah. Like yeah. you do with Fargo, but like True Grit. Well, or you know, here you have Jeff Bridges who did. Well, that Jeff Bridges, yeah, who was Rooster. So you're saying reboot it? Could you see this one with 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 Jeff Bridges? No. No. I don't think they should reboot Rooster Cogburn. I think they should continue 
the Rooster Cockburn character. Yeah. So I don't think they should redo this movie. Yeah. Or Jeff, I get what you're saying. Or like Jeff Daniels would do it. Like, as like a, a Netflix series with yeah. like Jeff Daniels yeah. uh, is, is instead of Jeff Williams. Um. So, I think, uh, I think they should continue it, but have it be kind of like, not necessarily Rooster. Um, you have Wolf throughout the thing talking about too. like I thought that too. Like he's I talking be, about how yeah. he wants to be a lawman and he wants to be a marshal and all this stuff. Make like another series that basically is, it's almost like your Creed. Um, you know where it's a, a from the perspective of another character who spun off from it. So it's continued, but almost kind of in a spin-off way. Yeah. What about you, Chris? Uh, yeah, I could I could go either way. I if they made uh, a sequel to the Coen Brothers movie and they had Jeff Bridges and some actress, I don't know. Helen Mirren, somebody like that who yeah. is, you know, a tough female actress who could go toe to toe with Jeff Bridges. Um, that might be interesting. But yeah, uh, uh, Jeremy's idea too, uh, you know, having like uh, the the son of Rooster having having Wolf, you know, become a lawman and him think back of his days and the the lessons that uh, that Rooster taught him and you know becoming a lawman and he's the first. Uh, Indian uh, uh, yeah. federal marshal, you know, and what what he would have to do with with all the drama surrounding that that might be interesting. Yeah, that'd be good. I like that. Him and Chicken Cogburn. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Rooster Cogburn Jr. Chicken Cogburn. Chicken Cogburn, which is also a sandwich at my restaurant. Yeah. It's also the new sandwich from Sonic, the Chicken Cogburn. <laughs> I get corporate sponsorship. What do you, you want? You do every time you say that. <laughs> every time we talk about their catfish Sonic and, and human slushes. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Um, third question. Do you think, just based off this movie, like forget, you know, if you've seen, I know you haven't, but like, uh, Chris, like if, if you had never seen True Grit, do you think this movie stands on its own? You asking Chris right now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, me. Uh. Uh, it's. It's hard because yeah, I, it's hard to divorce myself from the first one. Yeah. I I I because I, I think the the first one is superior. I don't think this one is is bad. Some people uh, act like it's bad. I just think it's it's rough because it's obvious that it's not based on any. They they made a script out of whole cloth, so. It, it needed to be more polished, but I think the characters are interesting. Um, you know, the stuff with Breed, and um, I just think, you know, Hawk was a little underdeveloped, and, uh, you know, so, some of the, the, you know, locations, and where where are we when this action is ha- happening, and, you know, not knowing enough about the bank robbery, are some of the weaknesses of uh, yeah. the script. So, you, yeah. See, I personally, I think that. So I think it stands on its own. Like I can watch this movie and not see the first one, and still kind of under. I can still understand what's going on. Like in a way where I'm not. It was like, would you do you want to watch the, the first one? No, that's this okay. is stand on its own. Okay. Um. But I I think that. Um, you know, it to me it stands on its own. However, without True Grit, it's not. I mean, it's not the best movie to begin with. No, but it's even. It's not. It's at least a little bit better once you have the True Grit kind of history mixed in. So like, it does stand on its own. But I think it's a far weaker movie if you yeah. haven't seen the first one. So I haven't seen the first one. I would say that this movie does stand on its own because I don't need to know anything really about the first one to know anything about really what's going on. It would help yeah. to know a little bit more about Rooster. Yeah. But um, the exposition that we do get, you know, Confederate, you know, and all that, it's kind of laid out there, you know, mm-hmm. pretty thick <laughs> that, that we expose. So I think this does stand on its own. Uh, it's just 
it's a little wobbly yeah. when it does stand. So Agreed. That makes sense. Yep. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. So, uh, fourth question: Does this make you want to watch the first one? So, being that I've never watched the first one, like I said, it does make me want to watch the first one. My okay. good. The character of Brewster Cockburn and the chemistry that he has with Catherine Hepburn enough makes me want to watch the first one. Because um, I do want to know a little bit more about his character. Yeah. I think he's an interesting character. I think he's uh, probably one of the better characters that we've seen on screen. Mm-hmm. That you're like, oh. Because, I mean, this is... Th- when you think of of John Wayne, you think about... This is one of the characters that you think about. Yeah. So, yeah, it, would, it makes me want to th- know a little bit more about the the uh, the history of Brewster Carver. Yeah. How about you, Chris? Oh, d- and definitely. I mean, the big draw is is Rooster. If you want, uh, if you like his character, you you want more. Well, then you got to go back to the source. You got to go back to True Grit. And uh, it's it's another one of these movies where you know, uh, you see Wayne, and you know he's not. Uh, I I will never claim he is a great actor, but he is. He's definitely a movie star. Yeah. He has swagger. It's harder in this one because he's older. He doesn't do much, many stunts, you know. Uh, but, you know, he's definitely a, a movie star. And if you're drawn to that and you want to see more of this character, yeah, definitely you want to go revisit the original. What about you, Jeremy? Um, yeah, I mean, it definitely makes me want to watch the first one. It also makes me want to watch the Coen Brothers one and, like, kind of compare and contrast how they portray the character. So... I got more things I want to go watch. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, and normally I I I do not like uh, remakes remakes, especially of something like True Grit because it's you know it's it's a pretty big movie in you know Western canon, uh, but the Coen Brothers actually did a very good job remaking it and putting a slightly different spin on it. Which uh, I didn't find offensive. It didn't make me, oh, I hate this movie, or 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 it. it I didn't see it as being disrespectful to the original. It, it's it's a good movie too. People should see the Coen Brothers remake. Yeah, we bought it. We I just never. Yeah, watched no, I it. saw it in the movie theater. So I've, oh, did I've you? seen I've seen oh. the Coen Brothers True Grit. Yeah, but I haven't seen the original. Okay, yeah. and I did it did enjoy that. And everyone that has seen that always says. It's good. Mm-hmm. Like it's not like you know, you know the best, but they're like they didn't shit upon the original. Yeah. And so you know. Yeah. Okay. It makes me want to watch it. Cool. Okay. Uh, and so finally, I'm gonna sum up our experience in two words. Um, so this one, think about it for a second here, Chris. Just two words to sum up your experience with this movie. But first, Bradley. Uh, you always make me go first. Some of his plot holes. I don't know. There was a lot of like this movie's. I actually enjoyed this movie, as I didn't enjoy. It, this is gonna sound really weird. I didn't enjoy the the acting as much. I didn't enjoy the plot. I didn't enjoy the dialogue. I didn't enjoy a lot of this movie, but I actually enjoyed the movie itself as a whole. Mm-hmm. I know that's just really weird to say, but there was something about the ending of this movie and kind of the way that it came together that I was all like, okay, I'm glad I kind of stayed along for the ride. Yeah. Um, but my God, it could have been even better. Yeah. Like it, it had a chance to even be better than the original probably. Yeah. Or at least about the same, you know, I, yeah. don't, I don't know if you thought that, but it, it, uh, cause I've never seen the original, but I felt like it could, but I, like I, I kind of enjoyed it. I kind of enjoyed it. To where I could put it on on a Saturday at two, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and just be like, okay, that's in the background, and every once in a while I look up, okay, they're doing this. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's what I mean. Yeah. I don't so know if that makes sense to you. Yeah. So I would, I think for mine, I would say fading out, uh, mainly because it's like you have these two stars, and we still get. Decent performances out of them, even though yeah, like they're decent even though that John Wayne is being a super ham, like yeah. it's also I mean he's still got enough presence to be like 
to make it interesting. And like his, like you said, to his interactions with, uh, with Catherine Hepburn are pretty good. And and even with that too, Catherine Hepburn is is you know at the end of her career as well. She's hamming it up too. Yeah, and she she is especially in some parts. Like she's like, okay, I'll match intensity, whatever. But like it's these people where. It's the end of their careers, and maybe, like, some people were like, Jesus, you're still around? <laughs> but, like, they were still captivating enough to watch that, like, I was like, ooh, I want more. You know, like, I I, I enjoyed what they were, were giving us. Even if it wasn't the best, most polished product, I enjoyed what I was seeing. All right, Chris. Moment of truth. Two words. Uh, yeah, I... Like you said, I'd probably say like uh, Sunset Roundup. You know, there, these you are go. people whose you know careers are kind of on on uh, you know round uh, rounding up to, to the end of their career, and uh, uh, but they're still putting in a performance. And people forget uh, this is the '70s. I, I'm a more of a spaghetti western guy. You know, yeah. John Wayne. I think of my grandpa watching yeah. well, westerns with my grandpa. Uh, I didn't grow up with my dad. I, you know, I spent a lot of time with my grandpa and John Wayne with his his guy and my guy was Clint Eastwood. And but still, <laughs> this is they're they're giving a performance that um, that uh, draws people in. And there's uh, it's not straight up white hat black hat. They're obviously showing that Rooster is a flawed hero. Mm. And even even the villains like like Breed. You see that he's got a little bit of a sense of honor, um, so there, so there is a little bit of shade. Not as much as the everybody is a piece of crap, you know, spaghetti western like I like, but still there's yeah. nuance in there and good performances. So it's it's worth watching, and it, the cast is just loaded with, you know, people whose faces you might recognize. Yeah, you yeah. might take you a little bit of time to figure out who they are. Um, I think we went through most of them, uh, except for Judge Parker, um, the judge who gives him his takes away his badge and then gives him his badge back. Uh, I know Court would recognize him, from Cinema Psyops, because he played earlier in his career the, the sheriff from Psycho. Oh yeah, so, he did. He, he is. is. Yes, you're so, right. So yeah, there's a yeah. lot of good uh, character actors in here. A lot of little pieces thing. It's just. You know, I would, and the scenery is beautiful. I guess they shot it out in yeah. Oregon in one of the national forests. Yep. So there's a lot to look at, and a lot of good performances. I just wish some of the, uh, you know, the script and the the dialogue and some of the character uh, development would have been a little tighter. But that's that's all writing issues, you know, and that's yeah. a problem with a lot of sequels. Yeah. So. I mean, we we keep saying that Catherine. This is like the end of her career, but. She wins an Academy Award in 1981 for On Golden Pond. Yeah. It's not like she's going to be, she's not all washed up. Right. But it is towards her. It is, yes. In her career. Yeah. And she did keep, she kept acting until 1994. Yeah. Yeah. Doing TV movies here and there. I I once saw, uh, I turned on a movie, (coughs) I think it was like an HBO thing. I don't remember what it was. And I was like, because it said, with Catherine Hepburn. And I went, (gasps) Catherine Hepburn's in a movie? Like a new thing? And so I turned it on. I can't remember what it was, what this deal was, but I think she was somebody's, like, grandmother, and, like, this, whatever the actress was, was at her grandmother's house, and she was talking to the guy who was the love interest. And I don't remember what the conversation was, but I heard Catherine Hepburn say, fuck a duck. (laughs) And I went, what now? It was just like, oh, my God. And she did it with her, fuck a duck. <laughs> fuck a duck. And I was like, that is the most wild Grew thing I've moose, ever heard. <laughs> fuck a duck. It's amazing. Well, we appreciate you being on, Chris. It was amazing to hear you uh, talk about history. And uh, that, I mean, it was so awesome. Yes. It was amazing. Yeah, well, it was su- it. we were super. Thank you for, for being here. Thank you for schooling. Oh, no, no problem. Anytime, boys. Yeah. Yes, thank you for being a fan of ours. We appreciate yes. everything that you've done for us, and uh, yeah, go ahead, Jeremy. Yeah. Um, Where well, can people find us, Jeremy? Oh, thank you. The people can find us uh, at the Deuce Podcast dot Podbean dot com. You're lying. No, they can. It's true. Okay. Um, they can find us uh, 
on iTunes, Big on, news. Big news. <laughs> on Google Play, on Stitcher, um, a lot of the podcatchers you can find us on. Um, if you go somewhere, make sure to rate us whenever you can. Um, and then you can also find us uh, at nophonypodcast.com. Uh, yeah. Um, and so, again, we have not only us, but all sorts of different uh, you know podcast friends on there. Uh, and then also uh, we are on Twitter at Deuce uh, at the Deuce Podcast, uh, so you can find us there. Um, we will tweet things out with the shows. We'll retweet uh, some other friends. We'll we'll throw other interesting things out there. So please make sure that you're following along. Uh, we would we would love for you to follow and comment and everything. So. It's amazing. We're uh, gonna do some other westerns. Yes, we're gonna do a couple other westerns. We're gonna do uh, what? The Return of the Seven. <laughs> Return of the Seven. Yes. Uh, and then Young Guns 2. Young Guns 2. Yes. Excited with that. Boom. Yep. And then um, after that, in October, um, we have our this year's October Halloween right. series. Last year we did Werewolves. Whoa, werewolves. <coughs> including An American Werewolf in Paris. Yes. Uh, which was fantastic. Go back and hear that because <laughs> that one, we did it, Chris. It was fantastic. Yeah. But we did, we also did Stir a Werewolf Bitch with. Court, with court, yeah, which is a blast. Yeah, uh, so. but this year we're doing witches. Witches. Yes. Um, which, uh, the witch sequels are more interesting to find, but we did <laughs> we do have enough of them. I think we'll have uh, court guesting with us on one. Hopefully, hopefully we gotta hammer all that out. Um, but we uh, should have some stuff coming up. So stick around. Uh, for the other westerns, and then stick with us in October for our uh, yes Halloween specials. Excited about that. But remember, the sequel is king. Good night.